Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante and I'm with Stu Miniman. We're live at theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's coverage of Dell Storage Forum. This is day two for us. Uh, this is the second year we've done the Dell Storage Forum. Last year was down in Orlando. It was really the first consolidated Dell Storage Forum, forum bringing together Equalogic and Compellent customers as well as the Dell customer base. Uh, year two, Stu, uh, you know, a, a lot more polished, I think. Last year was great, but this year really get the feeling that that Dell is serious about storage. Um, not that they weren't last year, but they're really putting forth, I think, a good show for customers. And speaking of customers, we're here with another customer segment. Chris Hansen is a system, uh, system manager, sorry, at uh, Gordon College up in uh, Wenham, Mass, in the, on the North Shore. And uh, you're going to go to Fenway with us tonight? Uh, yes, sounds like try to hit a some, great event tonight. Yep. Try to hit some homers? Yep, absolutely. You're not from around so here, are you? I'm from Minnesota originally, <laughs> actually, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sounds like just, it'll be a fun I've night tonight. I've been sharpening tonight. up my Boston so. accent, as you can see. There but, you go, uh, well, yeah. Chris, thank you for coming on theCUBE, and welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you. were you at uh, Orlando last year? I was not at, at Orlando, no. Yeah, okay, well, it's pretty convenient <laughs> for you here, right? Oh, yeah, we're right up here, so it's great to be able to uh, participate in the event. How Absolutely. long have you been a so. uh, Dell customer? Um, I've been with Gordon College for uh, just about four years now, and uh, Gordon has been using Compellent for about five or six years. So. Oh, okay, so... Uh, you were one of the original compellent customers. They, they jumped on board pretty quickly, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool, so, um, so what, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your role there at, at Gordon. I'm the system manager, so uh, I manage the, we have three data centers on campus, uh, and I manage the storage, the replications, the backups and recovery, um, as well as doing a little bit of the application level with uh, managing Active Directory, SQL, Exchange, um, some of the back-end pieces to those applications. Um, and we're leveraging compellent in all three of our data centers. Uh, we have cross-site replication set up between those, uh, which has been been very effective for us. So you do a, a little bit of everything. Um, a little bit, yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> consider yourself an IT generalist or no? Uh, yeah, well we have, uh, so we have a few different IT departments at Gordon and we're in the network, I'm in the network systems department. Uh -huh. So yeah, we're in the broad range of doing all of the back end uh, uh, infrastructure. Do you uh, have a, 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 a storage admin team or no? Uh, I Percent? am the storage admin okay. team. As yes. part of the networking group. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, so that's somewhat rare in IT, isn't it? That the storage and the, I mean, I've seen certainly network people that look after everything, but you've got a storage admin team inside of the networking group. Right, and absolutely, and just like we saw last night at the keynote, where they're kind of converging, they had a storage admin, their, their IT admin, um, their server admin and their network admin, bringing those together, and that's really ex kind of what we're doing at Gordon, um, bringing those together, and it's really helpful for us to communicate on those levels, especially where you're introducing technologies like iSCSI, we've got to be really tightly close, uh, close knit with the networking um, switches to make sure we can utilize those correctly. So Chris, tell our audience a little bit more about Gordon College, what's the claim to fame and the specialty there? Uh, we're a, a private uh, Christian college, um, we offer a, a four year undergrad degree, and uh, we also have some grad programs as well. Um, and we're in uh, Wenham, Massachusetts, a really nice area. Oh, it's beautiful up a, there. Oh yeah, it's, it's a great great location, yeah. really nice. We have a couple little ponds uh, that are exclusive there for our students. Um, we have a 12 to one student ratio, so we really try to emphasize small classrooms um, and getting, uh, you know, giving those tools to the students uh, to be able to get their, uh, the most out of their education while they're there. And, t and tell us about the IT environment there. So our, our IT department, we have, uh, like I said, we have three data centers. Uh, our primary, uh, primary data center um, is in one of our newer buildings that uh, we have was reached recently all physical servers that we just converted over to all being uh, virtual machines um, running on VMware. But we have, uh, you know, we have three data centers we're replicating across. Most of our applications, all of our tier one applications are in our primary data center. Everything gets replicated to a secondary site and we're also running a VMware uh, cluster on that secondary site. And then we have a third location that's still on campus and that's sort of our DR spot and that's where uh, we're getting a third tier of redundancy and we're implementing Commvault Simpana um, for that, rep, uh, for that uh, backup location. So you have so. three sites all sort of within synchronous distance? Yes, and, and they are all, all have a fiber connection on site. And, and so the, 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 the the data is all stored synchronously at these, or do you async to the third site? It's asynchronous replication. Okay. Yeah, asynchronous. So and synchronous <coughs> to the second site, or, or uh, we're not or doing asynchronous. Asyn we're doing all asynchronous. Are replication. you doing any synchronous yes. stuff locally, or snapshots? Uh, no, we're not doing. Or? Well, we're doing snapshots. Yeah. Um, so everything. Yeah, we're doing 15-minute snapshots locally on uh, in our primary data center, and then that's an asynchronous replication to our secondary site. In, in okay. And Chris, then are, are you utilizing the tiering functionality in, in oh, the absolutely. compelling? Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah. So we have uh, all of our 
um, all of our tier one applications like SQL, Exchange, Active Directory want to have those having the highest uh, capacity possible. So yeah, obviously we have those in a tier one structure. Um, and then we have, you know, the, with the replication um, topology, we have that replicating down to tier three um, as those blocks are available to, to be uh, written down. So, so I, I just want to paint a, a, a deeper picture if I can. So the, the you know, how many physical servers? Physical Roughly? servers, um, we were at a, around 100 physical servers, yeah. and then last summer I migrated all of those to VMware, so our primary data center only has eight physical okay. hosts. And, and then how many virtual machines are you running? About 100 virtual okay. machines, yeah, so everything okay. was a, so a complete it, conversion. Yeah, yep. Okay, a and then and, and the storage is predominantly compellent, all compellent? Yes, all three sites are compellent. Yep. How much storage? Uh, primary site's about 25 terabytes, our secondary site is 15 terabytes, and then our third DR location is 10 terabytes. And, and you're taking 15 minute snapshots mm -hmm. um, using compellent yeah, the, software, the, right? Yeah, the compellent data instant replay. Not, yeah. not across the board. You know, our, our tier one applications, we're doing um, shorter snapshots, and then some of on, um, some other applications, we can leverage longer distance snapshots for those. So, so you basically are offering the snapshots as a service that's, that, that, that varies by application? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then, I want to come back to that actually. And then, okay, then you async it off to the second site. Yep. And then, how does it get to the third site? And what's so the what third site, like I said, we're leveraging uh, Compellent Simpana, and that's actually doing an application. Oh, Convault. Convault uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Convault Simpana. Yeah. <laughs> and that's doing Unless an Dell made another acquisition that they I They just <laughs> announced <laughs> recently. <laughs> you heard it here first. No, they're, uh, oh, Convault uh, is our, our third level of backup, and that's doing an application level backup. Um, so th things like SQL, where it's actually pausing I.O. on those SQL databases and then grabbing that data. Um, is storing that in our third site. So there's no Commvault on the main site? Commvault is... It's throughout. It's running from that main site, copying it, it to our third Great. site. Great, okay. Yep. Uh, uh, so it, it goes from... So Commvault interacts with the first, the main, the production Primary site, data. and yep. the third site. Yes. Not the second site. Correct. The second okay. site, we're uh, leveraging all... Uh, Pure replay. Co ...compellent replication, yep. Got it, okay. And then, how do you determine the RPO for each app. Is that a discussion that you sit down and have with your constituencies and, uh, and yeah, the quote unquote line of business? Right, or? right, and that, so that's actually, every application is going to have some slightly different needs. And largely what we have to do is we're saying what's the, the core goal of our institution? And what, you know, what are we trying to accomplish here? What's uh, the most beneficial for us to put our money in? Um, so things like SQL, where obviously everything is referencing a SQL database at one, one point or another. Most of our applications are hitting a SQL database. Um, things like your public website, Obviously, we need to have that uh, be one of our most critical, uh, you know, have the most uptime on that machine, which is also leveraging a SQL database to provide all of its content. So we're kind of making a couple decisions of, you know, what are the most important pieces here that need to, uh, need, that are the most visible, that would be, that would hurt us the most if they had an outage, and kind of going from there. Obviously, Exchange, we just recently migrated to a hosted Exchange environment. So we're having a little bit less pressure on the Exchange servers, but obviously, when we had a fully uh, local Exchange environment, that was a very high, um, highly noticeable uh, event if there's anything that needed to pause operations on those exchange servers. How's so the hosted ex exchange working for you? It's been excellent. We've uh, we migrated about two years ago to a hosted exchange so solution, and it's been a really nice solution. So the college doesn't want to be in the business of managing email. <laughs> um, we're managing it. We're not hosting it ourselves, yeah, 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 though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right, like hosting email. Yeah, right. yeah. So, Chris, I'm wondering from the student population, you know, mm -hmm. how does IT get involved with the storage and networking and things like mobile technology kind of exploding? Well, what's the impact been on, on oh, your yeah, environment? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, with being a, in a college, students, they want to, you know, we're bringing, uh, doing bring your own device, obviously. Every student wants to bring every device they can think of. Um, you know, our, our joke is kind of your average student has a cell phone, a laptop, a PDA, and you know, a tablet, um, their Xbox, their Wii, their PlayStation, everything, and they need it all on the network. <laughs> and um, oftentimes they want it on the wireless network, sometimes they can use a wired connection. So obviously that's hitting us with an impact, not just for storage resources, but network resources as well, um, getting all those devices connected. So we're doing a few security policies um, to make sure that all those devices are in compliance with our network before they can join, and that, um, we have a, a policy key that kind of does a quick scan, make sure, make sure they doesn't have a virus on their machine, makes, uh, you know, confirms that they're running the appropriate updates for the operating system, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're actually kind of stepping in and just making sure, yes, we want them to all have their devices here, we want them to enjoy their devices while they're on campus, but we want it to be a safe place for all of them at the same time. We don't want viruses spreading from one device to the other, um, just because of something that we could have prevented in the first place. And to clarify, the, the backup is all Snapshot-based, disk-based backup. Um, so our is that right, or do you have 
Mm -hmm. um, we're doing an application level backup yeah. with Commvault, and then yeah. we're also, our, our immediate um, point of reference for any recoveries so is just going to be the snapshot and replications. The, okay, and the target for the Commvault is, is what? Just, uh, th that's a, that's a, um, just an iSCSI storage solution. It's made by Drobo, and that, that's a separate solution that we're using. Okay, so you just pick a, no offense, Drobo, but pick a dumb target, you use Commvault. Yeah, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, yeah. and then Commvault kind of works its magic. It can do deduplication de um, to that and target. And not doing any tape. Not doing any tape, no. So Entirely disk-based. So you've seen at this uh, event a lot of discussion around Apisure. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you're looking at? Um, yeah, we're actually. Uh, this was the first that I've actually seen anything in depth about that. But I, I, absolutely. I mean, so why would that interest you if you're already doing snapshots and mm -hmm. you've already got sort of the situation, you know, covered? What? What? Uh, I don't know if you've looked at it closely enough, but mm -hmm. I'm interested from a practitioner's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, what more value would that bring than what you're doing today? Well, I, I think just kind of seeing the convergence of seeing it, um, if it can be provided from our storage array, and if it's coming from that aspect, having that data awareness um, can really be beneficial. Um, right now we're starting to see a little bit of that convergence with, uh, with Commvault and Dell, but seeing that come right from Dell as a source I think is really beneficial. And in that instance you'd maintain Commvault for the DR piece? Well, it, it depends on... I mean, on I know it's hypothetical. I'm right, not, you know, but right. It, it would depend on what's involved at the time, um, what the offering is. But I, I imagine we'd still use Commvault as that, as that last tier of archival, um, since that can offer the deduplication and a final uh, final backup. So site. it's the integration so. that appeals to you. Absolutely. Is that right? Yeah, and that's, that's the same thing. If it were thing. just a point product, you probably wouldn't be as interested. Right, uh, well absolutely. That's the thing, seeing that it's integrated, that it's, a, like they were talking about last night, having an end-to-end -end solution, and just seeing that all of those products can be combined for the central purpose um, of providing what, that solid structure. What's the so. value of that to you, specifically? Y you know, from an implementation standpoint, that ha that's one of the highest rankings, is just how well how, you know, when you're going to implement something for the first time, how well is it going to share and react with the rest of the resources we have? Um, so that's huge, being able to know that this is already tested, it's tried and true, it's working together with these other components that we already have. That's a huge piece um, when you're looking at implementing, implementing a new product like that. All right. so, so Chris, you've lived through the transition of Compellent being acquired by Dell. Yes. And understand you have really good experience with the co-pilot uh, so, you know, s support that uh, Compellent has. Can you yes. give us a little bit of flavor as to you know, what your experience has been kind of before, during, after the acquisition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Copilot has been one of the best resources I mean, uh, one of the reasons that we're just rock solid with Compellent, why they're such a great, uh, a great resource for us. Um, Copilot has been, anytime anything goes wrong, they're on the phone, they're saying, hey, did you know this just happened in your environment? Um, if we spot something, we call and say, hey, wh what can we do to get this worked out? Um, an interesting story, my very first night, actually, as a, as a system admin at Gordon, our primary SAN ran out of space went into what they call conservation mode. <laughs> Oops. This is my very first night, um, 2 a.m., uh, after I had just done, done one complete day as a system admin. So the, and you know, obviously I'm like, okay, what the heck do we need to do? What, you know, how are we going to work this out? Um, the guy that called me, his name was Bill, called me at 2 a.m., just said, do you know this is what's going on? And I said, this is my scenario. I'm not, I don't, I'm not familiar with Compellent, what I need to do to make this change, but I, I'd love to work with you. He stayed on the phone with me, and he said, we'll work through this together. We're going to get there end to end until we had everything worked out. Uh, it was a matter of just working out a couple of replications that we, you know, we had uh, targeted more than they needed to be. Uh, but you know, it would have been really easy for Bill to just call, call up, you know, do his 24-7 monitoring, say, Chris, did you know there's a problem? You better get that worked out. Have a good night. You could have emailed you. <laughs> yeah, I, I could have gotten an alert, and I, I could have gotten it the next day You're once right. there was a catastrophic <laughs> failure. And you know, there were so many p possibilities of how he could have handled that. But for him to call up and say, "I'm not hanging up on the phone until we get this worked out," um, you know, that that's a solid a solid investment. Being able to leverage Copilot in that way. They really just stuck with it until this, this uh, solution had been uh, achieved. Okay. So yeah, that's where we're really, I mean, just thrilled about the, the support that Copilot can offer. Yeah, and so. has there been any change since the acquisition of Dell? So the change, yeah. By Dell. Um, they're obviously hiring a lot of new people. We're seeing a little bit of that, um, where we're getting you know, different tiered structures based on who you're talking to. Um, one of the nice things, though, is with that acquisition, you're also seeing that Copilot is offering, you know, that the Dell support as a whole is offering more, um, providing support for more resources that we have. So for example, um, our QLogic HBAs um, can also be supported. Our, uh, you know, our, we're using brocade fiber switches um, in our environment. Seeing that those support uh, structures are also involved with Dell now is, has been very helpful, seeing those come together a little bit. Whereas before, you know, if you have an HBA fail, you need to call 
QLogic or Emulex, you need to get a hold of that provider. If you have a server fail, you need to call that company. You, know, you, need, you need to get in contact with each of those. Seeing them converge is really helpful. Having one uh, central location for that support has been what very are the, helpful. What are the top items on Dell's to-do list? You know, Mike, let's say you're sitting down with Michael Dell, he says, mm -hmm. you know, Chris, just talk to me. What, what could make your life easier? And I'll get it done. What yeah, well, one thing that I, that I love, they touched on this a little bit last night, was doing some caching at the server level. And that's providing, you know, they were talking about eliminating that bottleneck of between the storage array and the server itself. And that's where you need to see an end-to-end -end solution. You, you can't just have any server provider with any storage array provide something like that. So having Dell, and they, they touched on that a little bit, of actually eliminating that bottleneck of between your storage array and your server, putting some cache, you know, some solid state disk, um, as close as you can to that processor, to that ESXi host this in our case. This is with Hermes, so is that right? They were called uh, Project Hermes, Hermes, I believe, yeah. yeah that's what they, uh, the Greek god of IT. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so yeah, that, that was really nice to see them touch on that, and that's something that um, only if you're providing an end-to-end -end solution like that, if they're behind the storage and behind the server itself, could they provide something like that. So that's exciting to see that. Mm. Um, and yeah, that, that would be a really nice piece, because that's always one of, our, one of the things on the forefront of our agenda, is how can we get that performance to a level that it needs to be? And especially in a tiering structure, how can you get those certain, the SQL applications to have that really fast read-write uh, capabilities that they need? Uh, Chris, my last question, I mean, you know, lots going on here, you got cloud, you got big data, you got all these new terms coming out, you have, mm -hmm. you know, big changes going on in, uh, in, in technology. Uh, for a lot of people, it's a complicated situation. What's your advice to your peers uh, that are, you know, trying to get done, trying to deal with data growth, trying to figure out how to protect data, secure it, deal with cloud, what's, how would you summarize what, what you would advise? Um, what I would say is really embrace some of the changes that are occurring. I mean, there, there's several approaches to how you can implement a cloud structure, implementing a virtual infrastructure. Um, but the resources, especially when you can look at a company like Dell and get support from all of these angles, uh, really leveraging those um, is one of the greatest things. And uh, using our vendor, uh, Winslow Technology Group, implementing with them has been a, an excellent resource as well. But yeah, taking a look at that and just seeing how you can leverage some of these great resources that are coming up. Um, VMware has been a great solution that we've been able to implement and really cut down some costs and implementation times on those. So. So it's been, uh, been excellent. We're excited to see where things are leading, um, and we're glad to be partnering, um, to be uh, continuing on this journey with Dell. So. Excellent, uh, Chris Hansen from Gordon College. Thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank Good you. luck with your journey. Thank you very much. And uh, appreciate your time. All right, keep it right there. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. We'll be right back from Boston right after this. <laughs>